off the rebound, Shaman Williams on the dunk there. Carolina up by eight. Then Diego Guevara drains the off-balance tray, ties the game at 74. The inbounds pass in the final seconds. Jamison catches. Wait a second. Controversy, a whistle. Are the Heels going to shoot free throws? Tie game, 1.4 to go. Now they've ruled that it was a mistake. The inadvertent whistle, you can see the Guthridge reaction. The possession arrow means it's Charlotte ball. This is a repeat of Valparaiso. Now they fumble the inbounds pass, and we head to overtime. The Heels executing well, taken over against Watkins team in OT. Jamison, the putback, the player of the year, rising to the occasion in OT. He had 19. Carter, big ball game. Look at this reverse dunk on the break there. Vince Carter rose up, played a strong game. Carolina wins it by 10 in overtime. And Jamison does not perhaps win the personal matchup challenge from their in-state rival. Jim Valvano always used to say, survive and advance, survive and advance. And, and I think we survived today. UNC Charlotte's a great team. They played great. I thought it was a really a good basketball game. The, the call could have gone either way. Um, so we felt that we had to turn it up in the overtime if we wanted to still be alive in this NCAA tournament. And uh, I don't think any of these guys up here were ready to go home. No more victories. Uh, these kids work too hard. Uh, we expected to win the game, and kids know they can't play for me if you don't expect to win. So uh, we wanted to win. We should have won, we thought. Uh, but Carolina's an awfully good team. Cuts in the deliberate tempo. Steve Goodrich, high post. Watch the backdoor cuts, which State did a great job of cutting off all day. They really did. They shut down those backdoor cuts, kept the ball in front of them. We see a backdoor cut right there, though. Michigan State beat them at their own game, led by two at the half. And in the second half, the Spartans got the game up tempo, went on a run, and continued to play outstanding defense here, forcing the turnovers. Well, the thing about Michigan State, I thought they were just strong defensively. And they're athletic, and Tom Izzo likes to get his team out and run. And they did a pretty good job covering up the three-pointers. Every now and then, Princeton got away from them. But as a rule, I thought that Michigan State was very solid on the defensive end of the ball. That's the reason they were successful in the game. We see Princeton making the run there. Jamie Mastelia knocking down the two-point shot. But again, down by two with a minute 30 to go. In the spot chat, Mastelio cuts. Goodrich never sees him. Under 40 seconds to go. Stepping up in the shot as Mateen Cleaves, the Big Ten Player of the Year, playing like it. That was a huge three-point shot, and Michigan State holds on 63 to 50 cents in the second half. The second half, I think the guys, you know, we just went in the locker room and everybody made an agreement, you know, if we wanted to win, we was going to definitely have to win on the defensive end. You know, and, I, and I, we did a great job of team defense, and that was helped us out with the um, victory. Cleaves, you know, I just thought he dominated the game. I thought he dominated the game completely. Uh, we weren't... Uh, able to contain him driving and you know he made you know a bunch of threes there long shots and um, you know we didn't have any answer when you win you're happy and you want to be around everyone and when you lose you can't even talk I mean I feel so bad right now I can't even tell you about it. but it was to battle after the little pregame conversation Khaled El Amin the freshman who's been so big the second half of the year knocks down the triple Huskies have the early lead Indiana playing a solid first half record feeds to Andre Patterson who had 13 in the first half Hoosiers led by five at the break. Second half, El Amin pushes it to Ricky Moore for the lay-in. UConn gets the game to their tempo. And then Al Amin drives and dishes to Jake Boskel. They count on El Amin for so much. On the break here, Kevin Freeman pulls up, hits the shot off the glass. UConn goes up by seven. And then Richard Hamilton. He'd been invisible for parts of this game, but the Big East Player of the Year is stepping up, knocking down a couple of huge threes, including that one from the quarter. And the Huskies move on a 10-point victory over Indiana. To back to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 84 when Detlef Schramp was on the team, <laughs> along with Christian Bell. Trip went on to the Sonics. Slick Watts was a Sonic. Slick Watts' son playing on Washington this year. Donald Watts drives, gives it off to Big Todd McCullough, the Canadian, the former hockey player, the seven-footer. His big body just too much for Richmond today. Guys trying to stick him for 50, 60 pounds lighter. It was an m and on the interior. They had nobody size-wise to play with him. Richmond had a great year, though, this year. But Mr. McCullough, 18 off the glass. And I'll tell you, this Washington team can play. I love Watts. I love that game. Deion Luke with the finish there and look little the dance, dance. Little shake. yeah do it, big Greenboro, Washington. <laughs> the Pac-10 continues to be very impressive
reverse the tempo. Andre Miller going through that Arkansas D, though, gets the friendly roll in this game. Arkansas, meanwhile, guys, their leading scorer, Pat Bradley, they play the good defense on him. Well, he gets in foul trouble, only gets three points in a, in a one three-point shot, a total of five for the game. They really did a great job of shutting him down because in their win over Nebraska, he had 19, and Bradley was just stymied all game. He takes away all of their outside shooting, Chris. I mean, that's the real problem when you look at what Arkansas's problem is. He gets away here, and he's able to get a shot, but without him, they have no real scoring. The only other thing they might get is if Kareem Reed gets going, Dick. I'll tell you one thing. Utah had to survive an unbelievable run by Arkansas with its pressure defense. They stepped up big time and came back really strong, but not enough. Food 16, first time since 95. First half, Sharunas Yasa Kavish just lobs it up to Lawan Profit. He was active in the early going. Here's Matt Kavarik finding Profit. It makes a payoff there. Kavarik, one more time. Profit, though, would only have nine points. He had some spectacular moments, but not a big night in the scoring column. Illinois, Kevin Turner could not connect in the first half, and they rely on him. Yeah, Turner is the big scorer for Illinois, and he wasn't able to get going. Both he and Jerry Hester for Lon Kruger had a tough time getting going, but I have to say that had much more to do with the fact that Maryland, I thought, defended as well as I've seen him in a long time. Turner with the big three. Another three. The game tied at 59. Now, Yasa Kavishis. Not just a three-point shooter anymore. Pulls up, shows the medium range. Game turps up by two. 23 seconds. Turner, the fall away. Doesn't go. The scramble. Finally, Obina Akizi Dick comes up with the ball, and he was huge down the stretch at the free throw line. Well, he went to the free throw line, converted big time for him. Maryland moved on against a Rico Hill, the guy the Redbirds rely on in traffic to Dan Muller. All 45 minutes in the first round win over Tennessee. Ties the game at 32. But after that, an unbelievable explosion for Arizona. 13 zip run in a minute and a half. 13 points in 90 seconds, and they kept the run going. I'll tell you, you talk about a run. They got three guys, lethal weapons, Simon and certainly Bibby and Dickerson, that can flat out play and will play at the next level. No doubt about it. Big time producers. They got the ball inside. A.J. Bramlett dunking it down. Edgerson inside. Dickerson on the lane here. And Jason Terry also got into the act. A very bad opening game for Terry. He didn't have his lucky cat socks. They were left behind. He had him FedExed in from Tucson. Terry has the lucky socks. No more 0 for 9 night. Final four. First half, Rafe LaFrance gets the pass. Up and under for the score. Kansas lead at the break. Only two points. Rhode Island gets hot. Tyson Wheeler from three. Catino Mobley, his backcourt made around a screen. They don't reach him. Rhode Island pulls in front by three. Roy Williams trying to inspire his team. Later, he would throw off the jacket, but Kansas continued to struggle. Lester Earl loses the ball. Preston Murphy misses. Mobley comes up with it. Fall away jumper goes. A 10-point Rhode Island lead at one point. The lead cut down to seven when Ryan Robertson makes the steal. Stops. Pops. Cuts the lead down to four in the final two and a half minutes. Jim Herrick's son, Jim Jr., the assistant at Valpo. He wants URI on the next round. He also would like to see his dad win. Great for France misses the free throw. Kansas rebounds. Robertson the three. This is shades of the Arizona loss late in the tournament. Desperation heaves. Not going. That one well short by Paul Pierce. And Rhode Island pulls off the upset as Kansas becomes the first number one seed to lose. 80 to 75. The fourth time this decade, Kansas has failed to make it past the Sweet 16 as a number one seed. You are right of the Sweet 16 for the first time since 88 when Tom Penders was the coach. On shock of Ole Miss with the last minute shot. And here's Bryce Drew, the man who hit that shot. Buries the triple here. Balfo would go up by eight. Florida State trying to battle back. Kerry Thompson in the lane. Two of his 16. FSU up by three. Less than a minute to go in the second half. Valpo would tie it on free throws. FSU, last chance. Thompson is stripped. Drew comes up with the ball, almost throws it away, then heaves it. Time expires. We go to overtime. Valpo running on fumes in overtime. Drew misses. But Antonis Vilshinskis gets the rebound and puts it back. Valpo up by four. That's the margin with 17 seconds to go. Baker for three. The deep one doesn't go. Drew makes the strip of the big guy. 
He is fouled. Homer Drew. He has the kind of look like the guy who's just gotten his first kiss. <laughs> He's going to the first <laughs> week 16. Lawrence Kidd comes up a little short, and Balfo marches on in overtime, buys shot. Johnson's a key guy for them. Strips Chris Weems, takes it all the way, and Western led by six early. Under a minute to go in the half now. Arthur Lee inside to Madsen. Back to Lee, knocks the three down, ties the game at 37. Then 50 seconds to go, Arthur Lee again. Arthur Lee off the fake, Stanford has the lead at the break. Second half, they start to punch it inside. Well, Young, Madsen combined for 38 points, 23 rebounds, shooting 16 for 20 in the field. That really hurt West. Big point right there. Rashad Johnson argued the call. He got a technical. He was fouled out after that. Stanford just took over inside. Well, they took over inside, and they had more balance. They had balance with the perimeter with Wings and also Arthur Lee. King Arthur was on fire, but the inside people just dominated for Stanford. Arthur Lee, 24 points and seven assists. Madsen against a monster down low. Second consecutive double-double. Stanford shoots 57% for the game. Break. Chad Austin to Allen Eldridge. Quint Purdue has really been strong in its two games. Yeah, they played very well. They've been able to get out and get some opportunities to run in the break. And you can see right there, that's Eldridge. The guy that really does great things is right there, Brian Cardinal. Does all the loose things you see him here, <laughs> diving out for a loose ball. I'll tell you one other thing they did in that game also. 22 for 24 in a free throw line. Titans were tough, competitive, had that big win over St. John's, but didn't have enough size to compete with Brad Miller and company. Chad Austin with the steal and the lay in there. Cardinal once again, he's not working Working hard unless he's collecting bruises. He's a Makes Rambo man. Here. Yeah. Add to Brad Miller. Cherry picking big guy throws it down. And Purdue rolling over Detroit. They were never really threatened from the early going here. Borders in the Sweet 16 for the first time since a hot start. Toby Bailey the steal. And the other way, Bailey had 19. Later in the half here, Baron Davis, the freshman. Freshman of the year in the pack. To watch the crossover. Woo! Man. But after the dunk, he would come up kind of limping right there. Davis to the bench and a major concern. There's Brian Greasy watching his Wolverines, watching his roommate Travis Conlon in action there. Lewis Bullock misses the three. There's Baston there for the putback. Michigan back within a point there. 30 seconds left. Michigan down five. Ward knocks down the three. It's down to a two-point game. But Chris Johnson clutch at the line for UCLA down the stretch. Calmly knocks down a couple. Michigan, the bench looks on. They're down four here. Bullock, another tough shot. Back to a two-point game in the final 20 seconds. Johnson, back to the line. Wolverine prayers not answered as Johnson buries the knife and Steve Lavin headed back to the Sweet 16. Johnson finishing with 25 as the Bruins knock out the number three seed, the Michigan Hot. Jeff Shepard will miss the jumper. Matt Banyak for the Billikens knocks it loose, but Alan Edwards then pokes it away from him and lays it in. Tubby Smith's team takes the early eight zip lead. Never let the Billikens up off the floor here. Larry Hughes, the freshman, has it stolen away. Jeff Shepard eventually comes up with it in the corner. 10 zip Kentucky. St. Louis, nothing going here. Robertson, Troy trying to make the cut here. Thinks he has a lay-in. Sheena Evans makes the block and Spoon knows he's in big, big trouble. Larry Hughes backing down the wild shot. He was just four for 17. Allen Edwards gets the ball back to Evans here. A clinic for Kentucky. That's just a heck of highlights in the first 10 minutes. You don't even see anything else. That's just Kentucky. First of all, they're very deep and they find a way to get everybody involved. I think they have to be most happy that they got Shepard back in the lineup because he's a big plus for him, Dick. I'll tell you one thing, Quinn. When you look at Kentucky, Kentucky. They don't have the star player. Second half. Blue Devils did have the seven point lead off the dribble. Rashawn McLeod. Up fake, hits the fall away. 22 for McLeod, and Duke had a nine point lead. But Oklahoma State, so sound, patient, chipping away here. Adrian Peterson knocks down the three, but wait a second, there's a whistle. Did he get fouled? No, they wave it off when they call the illegal screen on Brent Robish. Another look here. Oh, he stepped out. He's moving. He's moving. That's an illegal screen. But I don't think you nailed the kid with a technical after it. You let him vent his little bit of emotional uh, anger. That was a huge turnaround right there. Big turnaround. Peterson did knock down the three to cut the game back down to three. But then despite the bunny hop right there, which they don't call, McLeod knocks down the jumper. Trajan Langdon with the leaner. He had 17. And Duke holds off the Cowboys. Oklahoma State fans will always believe the Zebras had something to do with it. But the Dukies move on by six points in the Sweet 16 for the first time since 94. And it's the 42nd career NCAA win for Coach Krzyzewski at Ty's Denny Crum for third all time. Eddie Sutton asked about the three-pointer, which was waved off, and the illegal screen and the technical.
Well, I got the technical foul. And my uh, point was uh, that, you know, I don't know whether Brett fouled. They called a foul, so it is a foul. But the shot was out of his hand before the whistle ever blew, and that was my concern. And that was a big play. To beat Eddie's team in Oklahoma State, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great win for us. Uh, I thought our, our, our team played really hard. It didn't seem like things came easy today. <laughs> Never does against Oklahoma State. Meanwhile, the 4-5 game in the South, Syracuse and New Mexico. Fans in Lexington watching the Kentucky game, which was going on simultaneously on the little mini TVs. Wasn't much to see in this game if you're a Kenny Thomas fan turning inside, frustrated with the Q's defense. Well, the 2 3 zone really surrounding. He ends up going 4 for 16. Not really a big factor, even though he had 12 points and 12 rebounds. I'll tell you one thing, Digger. He's had a tough time in tournament play. But you know what else about this matchup? Syracuse goes on, didn't shoot well from the three-point range. Let me tell you this. Jimmy Beheim's the most underappreciated big name coach in the game. Watch this, Jason Hart. To Todd Bergen, they kick it back out. He can shoot it. But that's what it came down to ultimately, Chris. They were just so much faster to the ball, Syracuse was, and that's how they were able to beat New Mexico. You know, Kenny Thomas has struggled, but Syracuse was the team that needed to get out and get a win, and they played with some purpose. All five starters got into the glass with at least seven rebounds. In New Mexico, Dave Bliss talking about the frustration during the game. I think every team that loses at this point gets frustrated. So uh, there's no doubt Clayton was frustrated. I think Kenny was frustrated. Uh, you know, I'm frustrated because you want to keep playing and you want to keep either helping the team by playing well or coaching well. And so frustration is a big part of every team's demise. Right? Penn State and Dayton. <laughs> Calvin Booth was the force in the middle for Penn State. He had his way in the lane against Dayton. How about five blocks in each half? Booth with 10 blocks set a new record at UW at UD Arena. Then late in the game, Penn State was up 73-72. 46 seconds left. Pete Lasicki to Jared Stevens off the inbounds, puts it in. Penn State up three, and the Nittany Lions hold on to win, and they block fest. 77-74, led by Booth. Tony Rutland trying to bring Wake back. Actually put him in the lead. He does with the three. He had a 15 team high points. Wake would build an eight point lead, but then here comes Vandy. James Strong steals the pass to Drew Maddox. Back to Strong, who goes up strong for two of his 11. Then it's Drew Maddox with the ball again to Austin Bates, who scores left handed. He had 11 points, did Bates. Vandy up three, which is your lead with 15 seconds left. Jan Van Bredekoff wants defense or Tony Rutland to miss the game time three. He got the ladder. Wake senior Jerry Braswell bombing as Vandy wins 72-68. The Commodores are one win away from going to the Madison Square Garden at NC State. NC State couldn't find the bucket in the first half. Kenny Inge misses not once but twice. And then CC Harrison for three. He missed all seven first half field goal attempts. The Wolfpack shot 20% in the first half and only 14 points at the break. But here they come in the second half. CC Harrison connects here. NC State got as close as four off a 13-0 run. And with under six minutes left to play, here's Rich Eisen with the call. Jermaine Jones for three. Georgia goes on to win 61 to 55. 25, Travis Spivey finds Harpering for the three. Georgia Tech on a nine-zip run to start the second half. They led by one over Penn State. But Deion Glover has his way baseline and gets blocked by Calvin Booth. And on the next Penn State possession, Pete Lasicki to Booth for the lay-in and the foul. Booth with 16 points in the game. Georgia Tech down three seconds to go. Glover, the steal off of Greg Gray's. Could Harpring tie the game, send it into the overtime? Let's see. No, but I wanted to build up the suspense. <laughs> Bobby Krevins wanted a foul. He's not going to get it. Harpring with 25 points, and Penn State is heading to MSG with the victory, 75-70. to 70. Harpring finishing his career eight points shy of a school-scoring record. Four Marquette down four. John Cliff nailing the three ball from the wing, and then Cliff wasn't done. He likes that spot. Marquette up two, under a minute to go. Marquette up two. Minnesota's Sam Jacobson. The Jake, wow, he looked like a snake in the paint. We're tied at 71. After a Marquette miss, under 30 seconds to go, Jacobson. Doesn't make it look oh. easy. Tough lay-in. Minnesota led by two. One last chance for Marquette, seven seconds to go. Hutchins, the drive, kick it out to Cliff. 
Cliff can't find it from there. Jared Lovett misses the putback. And Kevin Clark and the Golden Gophers are headed to the Big Apple. Rich, that's about how you get when you're headed to New York City, oh, aren't you? You're very yeah. excited. Sam Jacobson scoring 16 of his 